hope sunshine man i'm glad you're here today uh what we got for you today is going to be pretty neat i think we've got these three uh can covers for a steel 026 one's got a pipe in it uh you can see that in the previous video how we got down to this there's a whole playlist of just muffler mods on this saw plus another of the build on this saw um speaking of the build on this saw so I think I can put in the description below what we're at currently on timing numbers. Um, but still, after that, we still got air filter mod we can do, ignition timing that we need to do. Um, we need to see if we want to change the timing any uh, from what the current timing numbers are. Uh, I think the intake could be a little longer for sure. Uh, we're going to see if we want to do any machine work. Uh, maybe do that last for people that don't have machine work capabilities um, you know they may not want to you know what I'm saying um, so um, we might cut the squish and cut the base and build a compression a little bit more uh, which in turn is going to lower our exhaust a little bit um, so we'll, then we'll have to decide if we want to raise the exhaust back up and raise the transfers back up what we want to do on that um, if we don't want to cut the squish, how do we want to do the intake timing? Do we want to cut it off the cylinder or cylinder? On, do we want to cut it off the cylinder on the bottom or cut it off the piston on the skirt? Uh, either one will work. So, but today, I'm um, getting the cart ahead of the horse. That's just things we can do. Man, we're having fun with this saw and having fun on the dyno and getting a lot of results that I think you guys uh, are finding interesting and can apply to your own saws. Uh, so, what we're going to do today we're going to test these three lids that we've tested before we test them with this can this can here uh what we're doing today is testing for reduced volume in this can i welded a flat plate that basically goes from the exhaust port out to this lip it's not protruding from the lip so these can still seal on there uh and takes up this the best i can it's not perfect right here in this one corner it can get a little air under it but i think I, th I think it's going to do what we want it to do because the baffle if you guys didn't catch that video with the baffle the heat results were just goofy on that uh just surprised the crap out of me with a stock baffle in there so i don't know if that's a reduction in volume or how it's making the airflow don't know so today we're working with reduced volume on two cans and i'm going to run these three lids the same as what they were on this can i'm going to run them on this can today so that's going to be our video I'll get you heat results and horsepower results. We'll get a dyno chart on these three lids to see where they're all at. Hold this up here a minute and probably try to freeze frame it on the computer for you a little bit. What, what I want you to know is this pipe here is 610 thousandths or about 15 and a half millimeter. So that's 0.292 square inches. The three quarter inch pipe is 0.442 square inches. The bark box is oddly shaped. It's oddly shaped. It's hard to do. But I will tell you, those are all tracings to scale. So that's that's a little bit less than the three-quarter inch pipe. And the three-quarter inch pipe, of course, is a lot bigger than the 610 thousandths pipe. Or the three-quarter inch hole. That was a three-quarter inch hole in this lid, which is considerably bigger than the pipe that's here and the bark box is however that was shaped right like that that's a trace of the bark box the best I could do however however that was fit in there I don't remember but that's a trace of the bark box so there's our area that we're dealing with guys on the exhaust and I assume next after this the next video after this one will probably be start opening uh, putting a bigger pipe on here maybe shortening that one this pipe thing may be a whole other video, but I know we need to open this one up more or add more to it. I want to keep keeping track of volume. Uh, we'll open the bark box up some more on the next one. And, and guys, we're still not up, with all these, we're still not up to the original volume of the original uh, Steel 026 lid that come out with this. That's also a tracing of it. We're at 0.58, we'll call it 0.581 uh, square inches. So even our three quarter inch pipe, we're still way below that. So I think we still got this soft snuffed out a little bit, but we're gonna do re 
we're going to do the reduced uh, stuff today and we'll start opening them up probably on the next video. <laughs> Guys, don't show that part. Okay, guys, here's the deal. There's all kinds of poor, poor YouTubers out there that need your help. It makes me sad just to think about it. And just for one one time free subscription, uh, you can help a, a YouTube channel grow. And and on top of that one time subscription, one like per video and and one comment or 15 comments a video, uh, YouTube can adopt a YouTube channel and and see the progress happening uh, it, it's sad out there you need to do your part <laughs> I don't know always having fun been goofy all my life um, you may not want to like because like my mom always said rest your soul don't encourage him <laughs> I've been this way all my life sorry you guys have to put up with it well you don't I don't guess anyhow like and subscribe if you would appreciate it First pipe we're going to do, we're going to get her on dyno, is this about three and a half inch pipe, uh, give or take 80 millimeters, uh, about 610 thousandths diameter, uh, 15 and a half millimeter. Let you go. Get her on dyno. My turn. Let's get her on dyno. Pipes a little bit right in the way of the brake too, um, but for testing it's fine. Kevin L asked, and a lot of people agreed what what these numbers meant. It'd be nice to know and to put something beside it. I will probably build if I don't get the Arduino done. I'll probably build something to put all these in. I'll probably build a different bezel to put all these in or something uh, so I can label them. But for the guys that are already along and watching, this is the weight scale is hooked to this platform scale here. It's got a decimal point right here, so it's reading three places past the decimal point. Uh, that's not foot-pounds torque on the saw, of course, because that's taking into consideration the torque arm length, which is 4.24 inches long. It's taking into consideration the reduction over here, which is a 24-pin sprocket driven and a seven pin on the saw currently drive so that can change at any time if I put an eight pin sprocket on it it's going to change this calculation for you guys I just put it in my spreadsheet that I've got an eight pin on it and it automatically recalculates it three other factors I'll talk about in a minute that also go into my spreadsheet that you guys won't necessarily have um, one of them is uh, what it takes to turn this chain over here I've got an inch pound gauge here and that also gets factored in and it's minimal guys like 12 inch pounds is only equal to like 0 0.08 foot pounds of torque in a calculation but I'm, I'm just saying that's a uh, if this doesn't work out exactly how I'm showing you the horsepower it's because I've got a couple more factors another factor is bearing drag um, when that's zeroed out what I do just to get bearing drag I see how much inertia it takes to rock this bearing these two pillow block bearings are not necessarily spinning. They will rotate just a, a part of a degree. And uh, that will show me my bearing drag basically on what it's taken to move this torque arm besides the input shaft. Um, it's the best thing I can know to figure uh, because the standard SAE correction factor for that if I wanted to use it, it'd make my horsepower numbers look bigger, guys. It really would, um, because that's an 11% they give you. Um, I don't use that. Um, which brings me to the third factor, uh, weather. Weather is a big factor on this, which I can't tell you what it may, may or may not be uh, on this number. Uh, but it can be anywhere between, um, let's say I've got a horsepower reading of 4 it only might give me 93% of that, which would be 3.72 for quick math in my head or something like that. Um, so I can lose, I can lose horsepower, but I'm not after, I don't have like a specific horsepower so I can say, man, look what I did. 
guys, I'm not driven like that. I'm driven by, I've always been driven by, by facts, um, or the best I can come to facts. And I don't want to try to make the facts skew the saw I'm building to say, man, look what I did. This is X amount of horse. And then, well, no, it, no, it ain't, or, you know, whatever. And who cares? Um, I've never hooked one of these chainsaws to a horse and seen which one would win. Um, but it's the measurement we've got, and I'm going to try to get it as close to it, no matter if it makes one of the ideas I thought was good look like crap. It is what it is. Um, or an idea I didn't like, and it's like, man, that works. No, I want to know honestly. I don't want to skew my numbers. So the weather's in there, the and there's two more factors. Which brings us to the RPM. You guys are seeing the RPMs a lot of times, and you'll never see it like at 10,000. And what that is, there's, there's a Hall Effect sensor here. And every time that goes around, that magnet passes that Hall Effect sensor and clicks off uh, one revolution in there. The problem is I'm running two magnets on there. And the reason I'm running two magnets is to get a bigger sample sample size, which makes it twice as accurate. Uh, uh, double the sample size, theoretically, make it twice as accurate. So when this is reading 7,000 RPMs, this shaft on the chainsaw on the driven is actually only running half of that. Half of 7,000 is 3,500. So when this is reading 7,000, this shaft is turning 3,500 RPMs. But with the reduction on a 24 tooth and a 7 tooth sprocket, the reduction is going to equal, provided I don't change anything else sprocket wise, 7,000 RPMs here equals 10,000 RPMs on the saw. I'm going to back up here. The correction factor with the defaults, 10 foot pounds up here, 10.000 equals 1.59 foot pounds on the saw. Okay, um, so it's a it's a pretty big sample size shrunk down. So this is uh, this is taking big number and making it small, which theoretically is going to make that more accurate. Now, um, this will be the first time, and you won't even see it in these runs because I just got this done yesterday. Uh, I've put another screen in here. The red numbers on both of them are ambient temperature, and you can see they're they're 1.3 degrees off guys this is not scientific hardware it's just what i got going on so even these two think it's a different ambient temperature by a half a degree or degree so guys we're not we're not scientific in the aspect that everything's calibrated and i'm not having people come in and calibrate we're scientific in the amount that i think it's going to be calibrated the same give or take every time so i think we can see rises and falls which is what we want okay the top one I've got set to and hooked up to this thermal couple. Hopefully you can see it right here in the top of the saw. You've seen it before. The second one that I put in is this uh, this pokey bit here that I can shove. Not in this can. You won't see it on this video. But I did that so I can shove that in that other can I've got and measure exhaust temperature. So hopefully I can maybe uh, tune these saws by exhaust temperature and see if I can get them a little more standard. Um, standard tune because I, I can uh, depending on how I tune it that day I've tried to tune it just a lot but depending on how I tune it it can change it a lot guys and we're gonna only show one probably dyno pull and one heat run this time because number one they take a lot of time to show um, and they're kind of redundant if you really don't if you really don't know and second Here's where you guys usually sit in this camera. Oh, here's the cell phone. I have it pointed at these numbers to record that why while I'm sit and uh, and I put you guys over here and I try to sync that one and that one the best I can. They can be a quarter second off, a third second, tenth second. I just sync them the best I can. What I got, guys. I I'm more like old gas axe custom saws there. I'm more custom to a gas axe, gas hatchet, it's what I always call it, and a sledgehammer and a swamp pipe on the 36 inch pipe wrench than I am to this. I can do both, but I'm a little club fisted, so um, I'll get those synced up the best I can with what I got. But I won't show you any more because, well, I put a big old greasy thumbprint on that one when I recorded the other one, so I'm not going to make you guys watch that or ask you guys to. Appreciate it. Hopefully that's an understanding. Any more questions, let me know on this. We'll, we'll give a better overview of it someday and how I built the sprockets and all that stuff is kind of harder to do than what my 
people might think or I guess what I'm trying to say it's probably easier to do because I did it uh, and I ain't much of nothing so uh, I think anybody that wants to can build one of these this spreadsheet was a little difficult for me but I muddled through it pipe sniped off inside the lid Okay, everybody, thanks for joining me inside. We're going to have three different charts for you to look at. This one here is a new spreadsheet I put out. It's going to have hole size and uh, horsepower versus RPM, which I've given us a cut factor. We'll have uh, area if it's just a hole and, and cubic inches or cc's if it's a pipe. Along with that, we're going to have our heat chart with one minute of load. But let's start off with a reduced volume can. We're all working on that reduced can. I know I've said it before. Um, the reduced volume can on the, on the short pipe. We started out uh, reduced volume. This pink line was just the reduced volume of the can with the same lid. The blue line is uh, the comparison to the before the reduced volume, the full size can. So actually on a reduced can, we lost some. Um, I'm not sure that the angle of that reduced can didn't impede the airflow out that pipe. I think it was pretty close. So we sniped that off on the inside and we gained some horsepower back. We got just not much, two hundredths over what we were. And that's the red line, okay? And something I wanna remind everybody, something we haven't thought about, Here's where we started out way back when on that stock cylinder, stock aftermarket cylinder at 3.1 horse. We're up to 4.21 on the sniped one, which was the top. Um, wasn't much difference there on reduced volume, I don't think, on the can, not as much as there was on other things. Uh, the next thing we do is, the next thing we'll do is reduce volume on the bark box. Now, that one made a difference all the way across the board. Guys, throughout all these charts, the blue line is going to be the full volume can. The reduced volume is going to be red. Reduced is red. Um, the original is blue. And the green line is what we were stock. I thought I'd start showing that in there. Seems like we weren't gaining much in here, but it, it kind of reminds us all the small steps we've made from here to here. Um, we've moved the horsepower range way up and the horsepower itself way up so um the reduced volume can um i only brought this chart out twelve thousand. i dropped the foot pounds chart off the bottom of this i can still put it on there uh but i dropped it off the bottom i think the horsepower chart is a little bit easier to read when it's not cluttered up if you guys want the foot pounds back i can put it back the green line's the stock line the blue line uh 4.4 horse with the big volume can. The reduced volume can was 4.59 horse. We picked off almost two tenths of a horsepower on the bark box by further reducing that can. Um, amazing. Um, so that leads us into some new things going down the road. We're seeing some stuff there. I like that. The hole, the uh, three quarter slash 19 millimeter hole, 
we were right in there within two hundredths of the same horsepower. Um, we're still way up. We gained, uh, you know, we're still way up over speed. But right now on reduced volume, these are pretty similar. The reduced volume really shined on the bark box and only the bark box. Um, so I don't know what that means yet, but that's where we're we're going. Tell me what you guys think that means. Um, and we've got some more testing. I've opened up the holes. The next test will be back probably six dyno runs. It'll probably be the bigger holes, reduced volume versus uh, regular volume and see if we can get, uh, see if we see a pattern there. Here's where we're at on the heat, guys. The pipe made, uh, this is all at 10,000 RPMs, 3.98 horsepower uh, with a reduced volume. The three quarter inch hole at 10,000 pulled 4.13. The bark box pulled 4.24, being the most by a good margin. And the sniped pipe, 3.96, uh, over the regular pipe. It actually pulled just a little bit less horsepower. I shortened it up, sniping that off, shortened it up by, and uh, you'll see that in the next chart, by a certain amount, almost a half inch. Um, but the heat reduction was more. Beginning heat was uh, Fahrenheit here, Celsius here. I'll just talk in Fahrenheit. I tried starting them all as close as I could to 275 degrees. Um, they were jumping about two degrees at a time because they were on the rise. Uh, and, and then I pulled it for a full minute. So you can see the ending heat was quite a bit different. The snipe pipe went to cooling better than any of the other ones, um, but it pulled the less horsepower. It pulled the least horsepower. So, uh, you know, take that into consideration. Uh, to me, this bark box, man, I don't know. It just keeps amazing me time after time. Um, it was the third high, it was the second highest heat or the third lowest but about about mathematically halfway in between the lowest and the highest it was right in there but the horsepower was way up there um the three quarter inch hole was hotter and less horsepower than the bark box so let's let's look at it on a chart uh it's going to show you the same thing but you can see the starting temperatures in blue cold being blue the ending temperatures in red red being hot and the green is the horsepower um, so far, and you guys can analyze this, I'll try not to make the video too long, um, but I'd say our best horsepower to heat is still this daggum bark box. Man, I didn't want it to be that way. I was hoping, I was hoping one of these pipe ones would do it. Um, so let's go to what we're dealing with here on this spreadsheet. Now I've got these highlighted on the reduced volume. I went back and put everything in here up to this point. And what I've got, um, like the original muffler lid, we made 4.3 horsepower, and this is peak horsepower. This is dyno horsepower, not the pull. Um, the area square inches and area in cc's of the hole. So we was at 0.58 uh, square inches of hole in that original muffler mod, the very first one we started off to. Then we went up to four tenths hole, and which is actually the area is considerably less. It's only 0.13. Uh, and so on and so forth. So we did the area down through here. Then when we got to the pipe, I was taking the diameter of the pipe times the length in uh, imperial measurement here. It's in uh, uh, cc's here or uh, metric here. So you'll get your cubic inches. That long pipe had 2.63 cubic inches of volume in that pipe or this many cc's, 43 cc's. And, and down and so on and so forth. Um, so the reduced volume pipe that was cut off before the hot spot, which was 4.15 horsepower at 10,549 RPMs. Um, and the volume over here, if you want to look at it, I hope to develop a pattern. But I took horsepower times RPM and just turned that into a cut factor. I don't know, that's just what I called it. Uh, but I think that'll give you an idea of how it may cut. The reason I did that cut factor, and I'm not sure it's going to translate, but um, 4.15 horse at 10,549 RPMs may very well cut faster than this four and a quarter, a tenth more horsepower, but at 700 less RPM. So I just multiplied that times that to come up with this. Uh, and we can put all those cut factors in, in a, in a, 
row, see? Um, the bark box was 4.59 at uh, 1,150, so that gave us a cut factor of 46,621. Now what I can do, I can highlight these and arrange these. I can pick any one of these columns. So I can take this cut factor now and arrange these by how they performed on cut factor. Reduce volume uh, so far out of all the pipes, if the cut factor is any indication, the reduced volume bark box would be the fastest, reduced volume hotspot second fastest, reduced volume uh, sniped pipe is the third fastest, and she's a ways before we get to the reduced volume hole. It's way down here. So, but on these three, the reduced volume is the cut, fastest cut factor. Um, then comes our long pipe, believe it or not. Outdid the original bark box, even though it was more RPMs. But look how much, uh, look how much RPM we gained on it. Uh, so I'm not sure this wouldn't cut faster. Um, it wasn't feasible to use, but I'm not sure it wouldn't cut fa faster. We'll have to do some more testing. But you guys get an idea of where we're going with this spreadsheet here with volumes. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me what you'd like to uh, see. Tell me if you digest the information better than I do. Guys, appreciate you being here. I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if I earned it. Like, subscribe if you haven't. Um, we're close to a thousand. Appreciate everybody. Thank you.